Shortcuts and hotkeys can help you to be more efficient in any program you use. And although this is more prominent in tools like for example Blender, Visual Studio also has quite a few to offer that I use constantly and that I think can be useful to you too. So here's a quick list. Some of these can be accessed via the right click menu. And the first one we have a look at is F12 to go to definition. If for example we scroll down and go to this float variable and uh, click inside it somewhere or highlight some of it and then press F12, we go directly to its definition. And I think this is most useful to navigate between different scripts. Um, if we press here and press F12, then we go directly into this other type. And we can also use this to, for example, check out the string class or mono behavior and see which public variables and methods are available to us. You can also navigate between these jumps and if you have a mouse that has uh, thumb buttons like uh, forward and backward on the side of the mouse, you can use these to go back and forward. Or if you don't, you can use these little arrows up here to go back and forward. Or the hotkey for this is control and minus for backward and control shift minus to go forward. It's not really depicted in this case, but clear naming of types, variables and methods is super important. And to change the name of anything, basically, we can just change it like this. And it's only going to change it in this one place. And we already see an error down here because it stayed the same down here. So to change a name everywhere in the code, we use the right click menu or F2. I'm going to use F2 now to rename it. And now we can change this one, for example, to float4 and we see that it's been changed down here too. In fact, it's being changed everywhere in the code. You might want to do this quite often to keep your code more readable, but just be aware of the dangers that it may bring. And these are loss of data and references. I've prepared a small Unity scene to show you. So we have our test script on here and all the floats have a value of one. And we have a reference to another test object, which is this one, which has the script on it. So now let's go back into um, Visual Studio and rename this float back to float1. And maybe also rename this other test script. Uh, you see right here, we can rename the symbols file. This also renames the actual file for us, which I think is nice. And we can rename this maybe to another test script 9. And now if we go back into Unity, we see that another test object has a missing script reference. So we got to assign this one anew. This doesn't happen all the time, but just be cautious that it can happen. And on our test object, on our float we changed, this definitely always happens. We lost our value of one and it's back to zero. On to the next one now, and that is the Alt key. You can press down your mouse on any line and hold down the Alt key, use arrow up or arrow down to move that line exactly one line up or down. And this also works for multiple lines. So if we select multiple lines and press hold Alt, press up, press down, it moves these lines. Speaking of multiple lines, the Alt key is also useful for editing multiple lines at once. Say we wanted to rename these some enum values so that they don't contain some enum because that's already in the enum. So we could go in line by line and remove them. Okay, but that's inefficient. So we hold down the Alt key and we drag all across these and we select multiple lines at once and then we can delete them all together. We can also, for example, use this up here to make these from public floats into private ints. And now the Alt key down again, and let's call this int. But now we get this error down here again, as this is not a float anymore. And it didn't rename this one. But this seems like a good place to tell you that all these standard shortcuts that you know from other programs also work in Visual Studio. So we can just undo this by using Control Z or Control Z, whatever you're pronouncing it, and Control Shift Z to redo. And we also, of course, got our Control A to uh, select all. We got Control C to 
copy, Control V to paste, Control X to cut, Control F to open the search window, for example, and the most important one, I guess, Control S to save. Next up is commenting. Sometimes you just want to comment a block of code out real quick to check if there's a bug in it or something like this. And to toggle block comments, we use Control, Shift and Hash, on and off. And there's also line comments, which work for multiple lines, but also for single lines. I'm going to show you this. We use Control, K, Hash to toggle it on and off. And for a single line, this do it doesn't matter where your mouse cursor is. So Control, K, it always sets it at the beginning of the line. But Control, K, Hash is kind of an awkward shortcut now, isn't it? At least for me it is. And it's also a great reason to check out how to rebind keys for these shortcuts. So let's go to Tools, Options, and then under Environment, we got this keyboard one right here, and we can make this a little bit bigger. And now we can search for anything. And let's search for our comment. And right here we got toggle line comment, and we see our awkward shortcut right here. And we can change where we want to use this new shortcut. I think text editor is appropriate. And now we can just press something on the keyboard and it's going to recognize this. So I'm going to try Control Shift C here. And we already see down there, oh, it's already used by some things. Things I don't use, so I could overwrite this. But I can also try something else and show you something else. So if I now press Control Shift Y, for example, it always takes two commands. And if you want to go back to just one command, I'm going to just press Control Shift Y again, and then I only have this one. For me, this is perfect because I have a German keyboard and the Y key is in the lower left. So this is great and it's not used by anything. So I'm just going to assign it. And now we can see in this drop down here that we can also remove these bindings, but we don't want to do that now. We press OK and I'm just going to try it out real quick. Yes, that works. This next tip is about typing out four loops faster. So just enter four, hit tab two times, and there we go. It's all typed out for us. And we can change the name of the iterator variable, for example, to A. If we press tab again, we can go to the length, say four, and we can press tab again to switch between these two. For each loops work in a similar fashion. So just type for each, press tab two times, and then you can choose the type of the iterator variable and tab and go into the name, for example, F, and we can say the collection is floats. And we can also tab between these if we want to change something. Even the switch statement can be created in a similar fashion. So just type in switch, press tab two times, and then choose your value and hit enter and it's going to create all these cases for us already. So, but if you miss this, you can also do this via this little light bulb, uh, select the switch uh, statement and choose add missing cases or default case or both. Let's move on to something more Unity specific. We have IntelliSense these days for Unity methods. So if you can't quite remember if the onTriggerEnter function has a collider or a collision as an argument, just type in the beginning of the function name and press enter and there we go. There's also this really cool thing called MonoBehavior Scripting Wizard. To open it up, just press Control, Shift and M. And here you have a list of all the Unity methods uh, that you can implement in your class. And some of them you were maybe not even aware of and you can check these out and maybe they can help you in some situations. And we can just check these and we can also generate method comments for us and add these to our class. The last thing I want to talk about today is finding references. Again, you can do this for all methods, variables and types. So just right click on anything and go to find all references or use the shortcut control KR. I usually right click here because that shortcut is a bit awkward again. And yeah, we can find our references and then it opens up a window down here and we can see exactly in which file and in which line and we can click on it and go there or we can have like the shorthand version and just click on this one here above each method and then it also shows us this 
and we can select it and double click and go there. And to finish this video off, one of the most amazing things that got added to the Visual Studio Unity integration, and I'm not even sure when it got added, I think it must have been quite recently, but this is finding asset references from Visual Studio. So to show this, I'm gonna view Visual Studio and Unity side by side. And now we have these three objects that have this script on them and it also shows us in Visual Studio. And we can click on here and we can double click on them and they get highlighted. And if we're in another scene and do this again and double click on them, it even prompts us to open this scene. So I think this is quite amazing for debugging. I've known this feature for quite some time from JetBrains Rider, but I'm really delighted to finally see it find its way into Visual Studio. So these are just a few shortcuts, hotkeys, tips and tricks that I use the most when working with Visual Studio and Unity. But there are many, many more. What are some of your favorites? Let us know down in the comments.